Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel Dentistry to the Point. This is Dr. Dhrumil Manik. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the next topic from the chapter of benign and malignant tumors of oral cavity that is verrucous carcinoma. We have recently completed with squamous cell carcinoma in that we would have seen that verrucous carcinoma is considered as a variant of squamous cell carcinoma, right? So starting with introduction of verrucous carcinoma, it is a warty variant of squamous cell carcinoma. Kya hai ye? Warty variant, warty growth rahega of squamous cell carcinoma characterized predominantly by exophytic growth. Exophytic growth means that there is no growth outside. From the oral mucosa, the lesion is going to grow outward of well differentiated keratinizing epithelium. Which epithelium will be? Well differentiated keratinizing epithelium. So once again, it is a warty variant of squamous cell carcinoma characterized by exophytic growth of well differentiated keratinizing epithelium. Now, if this variant is squamous cell carcinoma, it means it is not exactly similar to squamous cell carcinoma, but it has some signs which are coinciding with SCC, right? So it can be, it can be distinguished from squamous cell carcinoma by few things like mode of growth. This kind of mode of growth, right? It will be quite different from squamous cell carcinoma. It will have infrequent dysplasia. The dysplastic features in squamous cell carcinoma are quite particular and absence of metastasis there is no metastasis or very less amount of metastasis seen with verrucous carcinoma is the metastatic capacity of both come compared to squamous cell carcinoma so the three things mode of growth infrequent dysplasia and absence of metastasis are going to distinguish this verrucous carcinoma from squamous cell carcinoma do cheese ho gayi variant ho gaya kiska squamous cell carcinoma with exophytic growth of well differentiated keratinizing epithelium is to differentiate kaise karoge mode of growth infrequent dysplasia or absence of metastasis now there is also one more term that is known as verrucous hyperplasia a verrucous hyperplasia is a lesion or a condition which is almost similar to verrucous carcinoma but the only difference is ki jo verrucous carcinoma ki borders rahengi in the histological section it will appear as pushing into the connective tissue. You will feel like that its borders push the connective tissue. But in verrucous hyperplasia, there will be just an overgrowth of the tissue or hyperplastic exophytic growth of the tissue similar to verrucous carcinoma but without destruction on pushing borders. Its borders will not be pushing and the borders of verrucous carcinoma will be Pushing right next, verrucous carcinoma is also known as snuff dippers cancer. Now, why is this called snuff dippers cancer? Because it is most commonly seen in people who are engaged with snuff dipping and also known as it is also known as Ackermann's tumor. Because Ackermann's has has discovered this or identified this or given this, so it is known as Ackermann's tumor and snuff dippers <coughs> Ackermann's tumor and of dippers cancer so these are the two another names of verrucous carcinoma now what is the most common etiology regarding verrucous carcinoma so consumption of tobacco is associated with verrucous carcinoma the n number of cases are associated with consumption of tobacco and also human papilloma virus is also seen to be associated with verrucous carcinoma so the most common etiology kya hoge tobacco or human papilloma Virus, recalling everything once again, kya hai ye warty growth hai, kiska variant hai, squamous cell carcinoma ka, kya rahega isme exophytic growth rahega of well differentiated keratinizing epithelia, mode of growth, infrequent dysplasia or absence of metastasis are visco, differentiate kar pao ke squamous cell carcinoma se, verrucous hyperplasia mein kya hai ki isme destructive or pushing borders nahi rahegi, it is also known as snuff dippers cancer and ekamans Tumor. And lastly, the tobacco and human papilloma virus are considered to be the etiological factors for verrucous carcinoma. Now, next, moving on to the clinical features of verrucous carcinoma. So, first, uh, first and the foremost thing which we always discuss is about the most common age, sex, and site. So, which is the most common age associated with verrucous carcinoma? It is most commonly seen in seven, six time. 7th decade of life, which decade means 6th and 7th decade of life we most commonly see 67 years is considered to be the mean age of occurrence of verrucous carcinoma 
as the etiological factors say that tobacco consumption is the most common along with human papilloma virus so it is but obvious that males are going to be more commonly affected compared to females oral cavity is considered to be the most common occurrence site for various carcinoma verrucous carcinoma it also occurs in various parts of body like larynx and genitalia also but even in skin it is seen but oral cavity is considered to be the most common site so oral cavity mein kahan kahan ho sakta hai it can be occurred on buccal mucosa gingiva or alveolar ridge kahan kahan ho sakta hai buccal mucosa gingiva or on the alveolar ridge but even palate and floor of the mouth are also involved occasionally sometimes some cases are also reported which are showing that occurrence of verrucous carcinoma is in palate and floor of mouth next moving on to the onset of verrucous carcinoma ye disease start kaise hogi it will be slowly growing kaise rahegi it is going to grow slowly aisa uska rapid growth nahi rahega slowly growing exophytic superficial invasion right kya hai exophytic matlab bahar grow hota hua superficial surface pe wo invade karegi with low metastatic potential so these are the points which we already know we have seen in introduction ki ye स्लोली ग्रोइंग है एक्सोफाइट मतलब बाहर ग्रो होता हुआ सुपरफिशियल इन्वेजन विथ लो मेटास्टेटिक पोटेंशियल इसके मेटास्टेसिस के चांसेस बहुत कम है नेक्स्ट मूविंग ऑन टू द सिम्टम्स ऑफ वेरुशियस कार्सिनोमा सो द सिम्टम्स आर वेरी मच सिंपल पेन एंड डिफिकल्टी ऑन मेस्टिकेशन इज द मेन कंप्लेन ऑफ द पेशेंट अलॉन्ग विद दैट समटाइम्स ब्लीडिंग इज ऑल्सो सीन बट इट इज वेरी मच रेयर सो पेन एंड डिफिकल्टी सीन विथ मेस्टिकेशन then you will have enlarged regional lymph nodes or surrounding lymph nodes rahenge they are going to be enlarged and tender right so this the main metastasis ke karan nahi involver but the involvement of lymph nodes is inflammatory in origin there is no metastasis in the various lymph nodes of body but this is due to mainly inflammatory origin so symptoms mein kya ho gaya pain and difficulty in mastication bleeding is seen sometimes rarely and enlarged regional lymph node along with the lymph nodes are also tender right so next moving on to the signs of verrucous carcinoma so the signs of verrucous carcinoma is that it is papillary in nature iska growth kaisa rahega papillary you need you will see lots of papillomatous growth on the oral mucosa so growth is papillary in nature with pebbly surface pebbly surface matlab bahut sare pebbles matlab stones aap rakh do so the surface will be appear like a pebbly surface to so pebbly surface and papillary growth is the main sign of verrucous carcinoma it will be sometimes covered with white leucoplakic film sometimes kya hoga it may be covered with a white film on the surface of the lesion to teen cheeze yaad rakhna hai papillary in nature pebbly surface and white leucoplakic film right rugi like folds with deep clefts between then dekho ye lesion aisa rahega so these folds are like rugi so rugi like folds with deep clefts between them ye jo space hai har fold ke beech mein it is known as cleft so ye clefts are very much deep so rugi like folds with deep cleft between them is the main feature again so char cheeze ho gayi ab papillary in nature pebbly surface white leucoplakic film and rugi like folds with deep cleft between them now surrounding the lesion there will be a well defined rim of slightly elevated ओरल म्यूकोजा मतलब अगर ये लीजन है तो इसके सराउंडिंग आपको एक एलिवेटेड फिल्म रिम दिखेगी ओरल म्यूकोजा की द ओरल म्यूकोजा सराउंडिंग द लीजन इज गोइंग टू बी स्लाइटली एलिवेटेड एंड समटाइम्स वो ऑलरेडी नो दैट वार्टी फंगेटिंग मास्क कैन आल्सो बी सीन फर्स्ट वर्ड वाज वार्टी सो वार्टी फंगेटिंग मास्क कैन आल्सो बी सीन सम इन सम केसेस ऑफ वेरुशियस कार्सिनोमा सो अगेन वी विल रिवाइज द क्लिनिकल फीचर 6th एंड 7th डिकेड मीन एज 67 इयर्स मेल्स आर मोर कॉमनली अफेक्टेड बकल म्यूकोजा जिंजाइबा एंड एलवेलर रीज आर मोस्ट कॉमन साइट समटाइम्स पैलेट एंड फ्लोर ऑफ माउथ आर आल्सो इनवर्ड ऑनसेट इट इज अ स्लोली ग्रोइंग एक्सोफाइटिक सुपरफिशियल इन्वेजन विद लो मेटास्टेटिक पोटेंशियल सिम्टम्स क्या रहेंगे पेन एंड डिफिकल्टी इन मेस्टिकेशन एनलार्ज रीजनल लिम्फ नोड्स व्हिच आर टेंडर next these are mainly due to inflammatory reaction next moving on to the signs so it is papillary in nature there will be surface white leucoplakic film rugi like folds with deep cleft between them the oral mucosa surrounding the lesion will be slightly elevated and lastly 
Sometimes warty fungating mask can also be next. Moving on to the histological features of Verusius carcinoma, there is nothing much complicated in the histological features. They are quite easy. So starting with them, it is an hyperplastic epithelium. The epithelium of Verusius carcinoma is going to be hyperplastic. There is an exophytic or overgrowth of the epithelium. So it is hyperplastic epithelium which will show minimum cellular. A type there will not be much cellular atypical features there will be minimum cellular A type next is elephant foot retiridges now what is the meaning of elephant foot retiridges मतलब कि जो भी retiridges हैं they are broad and उसकी जो borders हैं they appear as if they are pushing into the connective tissue मतलब broad elephant foot का मतलब elephant foot is broad so even the retiridges of Verusius carcinoma are quite broad and the borders of this retiridges appear as if they are pushing into the connective tissue so that is the meaning of elephant foot retiridges next is hyperkeratotic epithelium जो भी epithelium present है Verusius carcinoma के histological section में it is going to be hyperkeratotic lot of keratin will be present on the epithelial surface secondly the deep clefts I had mentioned you about the deep cleft as if this is in papillomatous growth Right, so either deep clefts present है हर cleft के बीच में हर हर दो papillomatous growth के बीच में जो ये deep cleft present है, these deep clefts are going to have high amount of paracaratin filled in them. So ऐसे बहुत सारे cleft रहेंगे, उनके बीच में you will find high amount of paracaratin. So this is a hallmark feature of Verusius carcinoma कि the deep cleft present between the papillomatous growth are filled with Paracaratin. So this is a hallmark feature. You need, you can identify Verusius carcinoma by this feature because these are going to coincide with squamous cell carcinoma or any other histological features. But the paracaratin present between the deep clefts is the hallmark of Verusius carcinoma. अब lesion कितना भी extensive हो, कितना भी large हो, the basement membrane is always going to be intact the basement membrane of the lesion of verusius carcinoma is always going to be intact and lastly jo bhi connective tissue part rahega epithelium ke niche it is going to have chronic inflammatory cell infiltration right so these are the histological features kya kya hai hyperplastic epithelium with minimum cellular a type elephant foot retiridges which are broad and the borders appear as if they are pushing into the connective tissue hyperkeratotic epithelium or डीप क्लेव्स के बीच में आपको पैरा कैरेटिन भरा हुआ देखेगा विच इज एन हॉलमार्क ऑफ वेरुसियस कार्सिनोमा नेक्स्ट बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी इंटैक्ट एंड लास्टली क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लामेटरी सेल इन्फिल्ट्रेशन इज सीन इन द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट हिस्टोलॉजिकल फीचर्स लास्टली वी आर लेफ्ट विद द ट्रीटमेंट सो नथिंग मच इन द ट्रीटमेंट अगेन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ वेरुसियस कार्सिनोमा इज गोइंग टू बी कंजर्वेटिव सर्जिकल एक्सीजन यू नीड टू एक्सरसाइज द लीजन वेरी कंजर्वेटिव and properly so that there is no chance of recurrence although the chances of metastasis and recurrence are very much less then also we need to take care and the prognosis of such patients is also seen much better so conservative surgical excision is going to be the treatment regarding verusius carcinoma this ends with our topic of verusius carcinoma i hope you guys understood the topic and if you enjoyed the lecture then please like share and subscribe our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get regular updates of our upcoming lectures thank you